building is 45 years old up to here but then this was built in 86 so this part is only less than 30 years old. but beyond that obviously we're looking at the all right so you haven't seen this yet <laughs> this is a 30 this is our 35 ton silo those 35 tons of pellets and those two pipes that you see going into the building are the individual augers that bring the pellets to each boiler. During the middle of winter, coldest days, this, this uh, silo is good for about 10 to 14 days of pellets. We're going through about two tons a day on the coldest days. Of course, now it's backed off quite a bit. Right. But uh, the, the engineer had uh, projected about 400 tons of pellets that we burn in a year, and we're right on target. I think we're going to hit that mark. Now we were just looking at the budget, and um, I was wondering if you, how, if you could tell us about how much an inventory of pellets you anticipate us to have in, say, September. Like, how many pellets will we have in inventory? Well, I go on an as-needed basis, so it, it all depends on how if, if we burn any over the summer, uh, how much we burn. I just ordered another batch, so we should get another uh, silo this week, and I expect that to take us um, for a long time. How can you tell? Where's the measure to where? How Over here on the side, of Representative McConkey, there are two gauges. Those flip yellow when the pipes are at that level. So as, as, as the silo is being filled, you'll see those, uh, the contact gauges, they'll flip over yellow. You can see that the bottom one is, 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 is black, so the pellet level is somewhere down in here. That's why I reordered those are the three gauges. We can, we can see it in stages and kind of give us a, we, we, we can interpolate, kind of predict when we're going to need pellets. So so what's your backup that takes this thing somehow? Propane. Okay. And it's automatic. If uh, for some, we run out of pellets in the middle of the night or the boilers go down for any reason, uh, the propane boilers will automatically take over. And, uh, basically, the factory back is 86. That's, that's the auger that's the auger using the pellets the secondary pellets this is, this, is, this is where the fuel level is kept it maintains at this level more or less and then the pellets get augered into the bottom and right into the combustion paper from there independently like if one goes down and the other yeah. is capable of yeah. Supplying and then the propane to kick in if it's not enough, or is uh, is a boiler on its own technically capable of providing? No, this is all part of a larger system. This is just one piece of the big puzzle. Uh, these, this is a 1.7 million BTU boiler. That one over there is a 1 million BTU boiler. Uh, neither one of which are enough to handle the whole load in the winter. They have to kind of work together. And if, if one or the other or both go down, the propane automatically takes over and injects heat into the heating system. So you've got, you've got resources up there and down here to use heat, and you've got the, the heating plants between the pellet boilers and the propane boilers that inject the heating in the system, and which is all temperature-based. If the system detects a drop in temperature, it'll fire the next boiler in line to make up the difference. So I guess my question, thank you for that answer, but if indeed one boiler does go down and say it's during a warmer period, is it capable for one boiler to use, be used for the entire heat, or, or do they have a, like I've that boiler does the left wing and this boiler does the right wing? Oh, no, 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 it's all, it's all in the system. The, these aren't dedicated to any singular purpose other than to inject heat into the system. What the system does with that heat once it gets up to the building is, is a totally it's separate on its own. Right. Good. Now, and I'm only running one boiler right now. Right. Last week I shut down the smaller boiler because we're getting into that weather where we don't need the low quarters. Excellent. Yeah, you got to the bottom of the question. Yeah. Excellent. 
That's an ash barrel. That's an ash barrel. It starts, the ash auger started those black pipes that come out the side of the boilers. Every hour for about 30 seconds, the ash augers will run, and they'll auger pellets. They'll eventually make it up into the 55-gallon drum. About every silo. It take uh, 35 tons of uh, pellets will reduce that's pretty clean burning. Do you keep spare parts on hand, like motors or everything, or do you have to bring those in? If I had the budget, I'd keep spare parts on hand. <laughs> Good answer. So did you, I missed that. So that whole silo, that amount, the amount of that, is that what you see? Yeah. yeah. Wow, that's yeah, amazing. amazing. That's amazing. Uh, is that an intake or an exhaust to go ahead? The white, the white pipes? No, right here. Right, right here, right 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 it's just a fresh air intake. Anytime the boiler's running, one half of it will open okay. to allow fresh air in. Okay. And then there's also a temperature base damper that if, if this room gets above 90 degrees, the second damper will open. Okay. Okay. Well, you've got some you've got some leftover construction materials uh, from the construction of the new building. Um, those I could keep out in, a, in, a, in one of those uh, storage containers that I have outside somewhere. Um, but the other stuff, wheelchairs, beds, maybe keeping one for emergency, but figuring out we could start liquidating what we don't need. That I need to come up with a, a plan for the commission as for how best to do that because this, there is no sense in collecting things. Well, we've already taken a whole bunch of stuff out of here and truckloads before this, haven't we? Now, something that would be helpful though is if we knew what the ultimate use would be because if the ultimate use of the building were to involve anything in needing a kitchen, well, it doesn't make sense to rip everything out just to have to put things back in. Right. Because I'm not sure what the residual values of, value of the walk-ins are, but they might be a few dollars there. I think there are three different walk-ins. Two coolers and one freezer. Mm -hmm. And they could be disassembled and of course the stainless is you know, worth, worth, could be worth quite a bit. But we don't want to push on pulling it out and then only have to replace it again. Right. Yep. Well, I would suppose I would think that uh, it would be a bad idea to sell everything off if we're going to put a kitchen here. That's for sure, but there's at least $10,000 worth of equipment in. 
Stay in there. Yeah. Minimum. In, in terms of value. But if you had to replace it, you're talking a hundred thousand dollars. Well, maybe. Uh, for the, just the dishwasher and the stove and the sinks and all. But I'm not sure there's any plan afoot that would ever require a kitchen. Right. Not when the building's down. That's, <laughs> especially <laughs> if the building's down. All right. Thank you. For anybody who needs to be oriented, this is the main entrance. This was the main entrance. It was the main entrance. Well, it still is the main entrance. <laughs> of sorts. <laughs> right? The primary entrance at the very... Well, maybe it is the primary, primary. primary. <laughs> this, uh, this building is locked 24-7, so you can't get into these uh, front doors anymore. I can't afford to pay for it. Someone spent a lot of time planning and planting. Yeah. Agreed. We walk into the wings real quick? Yep. Yeah, we just kind of What's in the, 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 the activity room? Oh, that's all the, the one that had all the equipment in it? I don't know. Wasn't it? We didn't get in it. Really. Oh, let's take a look then. Back down by the boilers? Yeah. Excellent. shop and my old maintenance shop got transferred over into this room. We've got the cabinets full of stuff. Stuff. That's a technical term, right? Highly technical. <laughs> very. <laughs> yeah. Very. It can be loosely interpreted. Right. There's a little elevation right there where your feet are. Um, that's where the new addition starts, that side. So underneath these tiles, I think you're going to find asbestos tiles that have been covered over. Okay, so Same thing out in the hallway. Okay. Yeah, I came down and everything was locked. Everything was locked. Everything was locked. They're virtually identical. There's a couple changes. Mark? Yeah. Yeah, there was some little jog in the building. Yeah, the building right there, yeah. Right. Yeah, that would be uh, on one of the plans that I, I might be about right there is where I can't quite remember. It's maybe it's right here, or, but we're kind of in the zone where the cross wall would be built, the new exterior right wall here. on, if we keep the entire core. This is the area where the building would stop, and then these would be demolished if we were to get, you know, demolish wings. Basically, that's where it stops, and this would be what we demolish. Is federal money available? Is federal money available to turn this into uh, senior housing? It may be. That's uh, I don't know. That's something that we're going to try to look at. As far as what's available, we need. To, we're going to try to research that and try to glean out what might be available by perhaps issuing some RFPs to see if we can get some people interested in trying to. Make some things happen. It'd be difficult to turn this into HUD housing and then meet HUD standards. Not impossible. Because the renovation cost to do that might be greater than new construction costs. 
That would be an interesting, it's an interesting option for the property, but I'm not sure. It's a shame you have a building that's really, in the scheme of things, not that old. But well, I, mean, I know it's the cost of rehabbing it. It's roof. Is there, you know, the more trustworthy inmates? Is this a possibility for ruling for them? The ones that we need it. Jail's not pulled out. No. We could create a crime wave or something. No, <laughs> I don't think so. No. Okay. Well, we have to space for 19 women. This is what's laid down in uh, Goss Town. Right? Exactly like this. They, this this uh, this walkway is even narrower. What do they do for security? Cameras all, all up and down the hall. There's cameras everywhere, but the halls are so narrow right now that if we stood on that wall, the next person stood on that wall, an inmate walked through the middle. That's all even there is. Really? Yeah, that's horrible. Is the other way any worse than this one? Yeah. The other side. It's about the same. It, it is a dilemma. Demolition, you know, a, like a college or, you know, trade school to practice demolition. Demolition, yeah, demolition. Uh, I, think that's demolishing. Something, I think that's something you learn on the job. Okay. <laughs> no, I'm trying to think of potential expensive money. There's not a whole lot of salvage value. In fact, there's very little salvage value. Were you able to use, able to use, any, were you able to use any of the equipment in here or was there no one that you get all the equipment? Just about all new equipment, because everything was so dated in terms of beds and bedside. Yeah, exactly. Are the, uh, are the doors, uh, what do they do with the higher security? We take care of the square. Well, we do. Yeah. You have, you'll have, uh, you'll have you'll break into a wing where they'll have locked you know, gates and things in there. But essentially, this is a uh,
stuff in the combustion chamber. This is really the same. Oh yeah. Well it's probably because they had to run the augers at that angle. Didn't you feel like that? That's gonna go right that's gonna go right through the pole. That. What are you trying to figure out? Why the footprint changed? Yeah. yeah because the silo came before the boilers. They couldn't get the equipment through. Yeah. Um, that choked it off just enough that they uh, that they were going to have to take. They couldn't get the truck through. Really? It. Yeah. So they spun it to open it up to get the boilers. To get the boilers in? Yeah. Oh, no way. Yeah. See, I thought it was because the augers needed nope. a straight shot. And I could see he could adjust them, but then that... I guess it would have just missed. <laughs> I guess that looked like it was... Going right over the, the foot friend of that pole. I was like, oh, you're not going to go through the pole. It's really neat, though. It's amazing to think that all of that goes into that one drum. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. That that I find amazing. <laughs> Since I own a wood stove, <laughs> with regular logs, it's like, what? I have more than that just from a week. Yeah, I think. look a lot smaller though from the outside. When you're looking down those hallways, it seems like they kind of yeah, go forever. Yeah,